So I'm at my friend's Steve and Julia's orchard and they very kindly said I can obtain some materials for making baskets today. So I'm going to try to make a hazel and bramble basket. So to start off with, I need some whippy bits of coppiced hazel. It's probably something a bit like that. Yeah, a nice thin bit of hazel like that. I'm going to look around, see if I can find any nice, straight, easy bits. Because they've coppiced different pieces of this at different times. And then for brambles, I'm going to pull down some of these trailing pieces here. And that'll be for making my basket. So there's lots of this, these bramble stems hanging down like this. I'll find a bunch of those. And that's what we're going to use. So, let's go and find the hazel first. Now all I'm going to do is make some loops. Think about the size of the basket I want to make. And I might need to just coax this a little bit so it doesn't snap. I'm going to take the thickest bit off because it's just a little bit too stiff. Obviously the thicker the branch, the less it will tend to bend. That's good. About right. Yeah, I reckon that's about right. And I'll just make that into a, a loop like that. Now for the brambles, what I want is these long runners. This is this year's growth. And don't attempt anything without the gloves. Because these are super thorny. I'll cut those up as high as I can. And then with a piece of tough sackcloth kind of pull them through and rub all the thorns off let's pull them through it a few times if you've got tough sort of leather gloves you might be able to do that with the with the gloves directly i can't because these are soft leather gloves and what we're left with is a very very nice flexible piece of bramble that i can use from a basket but i need a lot of these so here's a fun thing, the reason the brambles make these long trailing branches like this is as soon as the tip hits the ground it will root and create a new plant. As you can see I got some battle wounds from picking these brambles but you know something something omelette, something something eggs. So I'm just going to see if I can figure out a slightly better way to strip the thorns off of these. I think it's going to be like this. Yeah, much better. So I've just temporarily lashed the top of the three pieces of handle together here, just to hold them, because the next thing then is to weave this piece in here. The camera wasn't rolling, unfortunately, and I thought it was. But yeah, I'm just weaving, I've just started off here and then went up and round and then back over the tail so it's kind of holding itself in place and then it's just over and under over and under all the way here like that okay slight change of plan because that wasn't working but this is so i've just got two hoops and i've lashed one of them to the other like that i'm just going to do the same here so i'll show you how that works i'm going to start there and i'm going over the top here. I'm going behind on this one. Into the middle. Just got to hold it straight while I do the first couple of turns. 
and then like that. Now oh, that's not good when it splits like that. I need to use a slightly more pliable bramble. So I've got to find a, a younger, more whippy one. That looks good. Okay, so as we were then. Right, so it's going round the back and round the front that way. So just need to make that consistent or else it'll look wonky forever. So just kind of going over and under, outside, inside. That's it. And then push it through there just to lock it off. All these straggly ends, once the basket's dry, they will hold themselves in place and then I can just trim them flush. So that's the basket. It needs a couple more pieces here and here so I can weave in and out. So I just need to cut some thin pieces of hazel and then we'll lash them in with more bramble. What I'm going to do for this bit here is I've got these pieces of extra hazel and I'm just going to jam them into that knot there, bend them around, and the same that side. So jam them into the knot. That might not seem like it's terribly secure, and at the moment it isn't, but once I've got the rest of the weave on there, that will actually hold that all together very nicely. And it doesn't really matter that that's just friction fit at the moment because the next bit is going to hold that all in place. So that's the general shape of the basket. Oh, I like that. Just give it a little tweak for shape. Yeah, I like that. And it will sit down, so that's good. Right, now we need to get some brambles on this with a piece just there like that. We're just going to go over and under to start with at the sides here. Pulling it nice and tight and it's actually starting to look like a basket already. The process of working in another piece is really quite simple. You just make a, well, I need to get rid of those thorns. Let's just get rid of that end piece that got loads of thorns on there. So just bend that double like that, and then we'll put it into there like that, and then carry on as if nothing had happened. So then that goes back that way. Oh, snapped again. Okay, let's start again. Okay, and starting a new piece obviously is necessary every now and again anyway because we just run out, even if it doesn't snap. But I'm going to leave that like that for now and just do the same on the other side and then I'll work from both sides into the middle. I'm now at the, at the point where I've got a little bit of basket formed at each side and as this weaver is going on to here it's going on at more and more of an angle so what i'm going to what i've decided i'm going to do is as it goes over here instead of just going straight over each time now it goes over there i'm going to wrap it round once and then take it back and that'll just help to create a little bit more strength and body at that end so i ran out of time to complete that on the first day so i'm back here at the orchard the next day in an undercover area because it's a little bit overcast and rainy today. That's as far as I got with the basket. So I'm gonna continue. I need to gather some more materials and finish that off today. I am surrounded by more competent examples of basket weaving. 
but we'll do the best we can. Right, need to get some more bramble stems. I've got some thicker gloves this time, and then we'll crack on. So very much as before, I'm just going to take these bramble stems and work them in. So that just entails finding a good place to start. Now sometimes the ends of these stems are a little bit brittle, so it's just worth testing. Yeah, no, these are pretty good. So I'm just going to bend it double like that, decide where I'm going to start, which looks like it's about there, and I'm going to start underneath. These straggly bits, don't worry about them, we'll tidy them up at the end of the process. So I'm going to start underneath here, which means I'll just double back to there. Just hold that piece in place like that while I get started. A little bit of a snap there actually, let's just make sure that's not going to be critical. Yeah, I think we'll just lose that end piece. Okay, let's try again. So a nice bend. And I want to start underneath there, so we'll go like that. Like that. Okay. And then over here. And I'm not always wrapping around. I'm kind of making a judgment call on whether to wrap double around this rim or not. It doesn't always need it. But one place you do need to wrap around double is if the if the weaver is going to be slack on the inside. So I will wrap that round there. God, there's a thorn in there. That's what I missed. Just shave that off. So we'll just wrap that round there like that. Okay, and then over. And under. And just pushing in towards the edge every time round. See there, if I leave that across there, you can see that's pulled tight, so that's no good for it to go under here like that. So we'll just make that conform to the stake by wrapping it round. Okay, I need to start another one. And I'll leave those bits in because they all help. Right, I'm going to do the rest of it standing up, because actually sitting is just not very productive. And so I, I want to carry on where this one's going. So I'm going to start from here, and we're go, going to go over the top. So, just get the brittle pieces off the end. And I'll start like that. So that goes under. I've just found another thorn I must have missed. Must have been a little bit uh, lazy with trimming some of these thorns off yesterday. Okay, and again, that's going to go too tight across there. So we'll need to wrap this round. And I found that wrapping it round is actually best if you kind of almost ease it around with your thumb rather than just try and bend it and loop it. You can kind of crush the the bramble material with your thumb and avoid a severe break. I'm not very worried about that break there because it's not at a joint. If I harvested these bramble vines a little bit earlier in the year, yeah that's no good there, so we're gonna to have to start again there. Yeah, These brambles are a little bit brittle and I think if I'd started earlier in the year, so if I'd done this in August, it probably would have been better. But we are where we are. 
Yeah, okay, so that didn't go very far at all, that one. That's just waste, waste of space, that one. Okay, start that again. So I want to be going under here. Like that. And give that a bend around. Oops. Yeah, these are the better ones. The thin, whippy brambles are definitely better than the thicker ones for bending around. I am going to go all the way around on that one because it just was making some snapping noises. Once this dries out, these stems become a lot tougher and you don't have to worry quite so much about the pieces that will snap. Now as we approach the middle, this is going to get very fiddly because we're going to be kind of threading this into a very narrow slot, but we'll see what happens when we get there. So I'm going to try a different tactic here, which is start from the thin end. Now take off anything that's too sappy off of there and we're wanting to go under so like that no <laughs> so I'll thread that through already I'm very sure that people who do basket making at a more competent level than this will be looking at me and shaking their heads right now because I am kind of making this up as I go along. I took a design for a basket that I have seen before and I'm just trying to copy it working out what they might have done to make it. So I don't think what I'm doing here is actually any kind of uh, official method if there is such a thing but I'm doing something that probably works so here I've got to wrap around that because you can see that's pulled tight across there like that and that's no good so I've got to wrap around here so what I'm going to do is just hold that with my thumb and kind of squish it onto the stake like that which will help to prevent it from from just snapping I've got a break right there that I'll have to deal with in a minute I'll cross that bridge when we get to it so there we go so that gives it a, a stronger wrap around there and I need to do the same here, but I think we're going to lose that there, so I'm just going to cut that off. Well, I think starting from the thin end does work better, so we'll continue doing that, I think. So, I need to start from, it goes over there, and it's going to go under here, right. So... Well, I'll do that piece there. I'm going to hold that across there. Give that a wrap around. And that will lock it in. Good. Right, possibly now the most difficult part because we've got to work in this really narrow gap here and just jam the last few weavers in. So... But the process is still the same as it was. So I want to get under here. So I'll start with going over. And 
tighten that bit there. I'm just going to wrap myself around it. The most difficult part of this, the most difficult part of this is obviously that there's really only one dimension in which it can bend now, and it does tend to provoke snaps like that. So actually that's no good. So what I might need to do for these last little bits is use a much more pliable piece here and maybe just give it a little mash all the way along like that. Just to give it a bit more flexibility so it doesn't snap like a twig. That should do it. Yeah, so I'll just give that. Some of these bramble stems, the thorns really didn't want to come off. Some of them they just slide off when you put the cloth over it. Others really didn't want to play and the thorns were almost integral with the, the core of the, the thing. It's I suppose it's just different species of or subspecies of bramble. But anyway, Right, so I want to go under here, so I'm going to go like that, over there, actually no I don't, I want to go over there, so I want to go over there, under there, and we'll tuck that back through there like that. And this piece here, I'll lock into place by just holding it there while I bring that other piece over the top. Under. And as you can see, there's not an awful lot of room to work with now. in a way a good thing because that means we're nearly finished. Okay, I'm going to go round once there. part where the thorns are actually snagging on the other weavers so right we got a bit of a snap there so I'm just gonna actually it's still really tough but I'm gonna cut that off I'll go right round and this extra piece here this end I'll just find a way to thread that in or I'll leave it there and the next one will lock that in. Next one's probably going to be the last piece. So let's pick a nice flexible bit. This looks like the one. And again, I'm just going to do that mash all the way down, just giving it a little bend like that, just to make it more pliable. Okay, this is the last one going through now. And because of the somewhat informal nature of this basket, you can get away with pushing it through not quite the right place. So really I'm just using this opportunity to fill in a few gaps and lock in a few ragged edges. That 
is more or less that. So this last piece here, I don't know if you can see what I'm going to do, I'm just going to thread it along inside the weave of the basket there. Come in there and I'll go back through there again and we'll just lose it into that area there. Alright, grab that end and pull it through. And now, all these little ragged bits here can just be carefully trimmed off. I probably need probably be better to do it with a pair of snips rather than a sharp knife, but I'll show you what I mean. So all of these messy bits can just be trimmed off. And I might leave that until actually what will happen over the next few days is this material, these bramble stems, will kind of cure. They will dry out and they will become a lot stiffer. They will actually thin down so the gaps in this basket will become a little bit more conspicuous. But these will become tougher and stiffer and it will hold the whole basket together. So just a little kind of trim of the untidy bits. And there we go, that is, more or less, the finished basket. What do you think? So there we go. Tough as old boots, one completed bramble and hazel basket. I'm happy with that. That's actually quite satisfying. Let's go and give it a test run. The apples this year, because of the drought we had, the apples are actually quite small. That one's not ready to go yet. Let's just find some that are. No, these are not ready to pick yet. Let's try a different variety. Yep. So those are just lifting off the spur. Just lift them up. And if they're ready, they come straight away. Well, as a basket, it works. I mean, how could it not? Right, well, let's see what else there might be around that we can pick. I think I spotted some mushrooms somewhere earlier. Let's have a wander around, see if it can find me. Yeah, here we are. That is a field mushroom. Beautiful. With this few showers of rain we've had just recently could make it a really good year for fungi this year. We've had a, such a dry summer, but now that it's rained, the mushrooms might well come up. The apples haven't done very well at all. These are russets. Very small apples, unfortunately but maybe they'll have some flavour. I'll pick a couple of russets. I do like a russet apple. Some of these down here are slightly better looking. I don't think, I don't think Steve and Julia did very much thinning because the apples were so sparse and small. I don't think they've done very much thinning this year, so there's a lot of rather crowded apples on the tree here, but I imagine most of these will get pressed for juice. A few more field mushrooms here, very nice ones. Beautiful. 
I think I might leave that one. Let's see if there's any more, because they do tend to appear in rings and drifts and so on. Ah, here, pretty sure, let me just check. Yep, this is Merasmus oreades. This is uh, the fairy ring mushroom. Some damsons. Yeah, these are really very overripe, but they will have a fantastic flavor for, them, for all of that. And I won't pick the pears, but I will take a few fallers if they're sound. Well, there we go. So that was my foraged hazel and bramble basket put to use. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.